The Unshackled Waves, episode 122. Broadcasting from Melbourne, Australia, this is The Unshackled Waves with Tim Wills. Brought to you by theunshackled.net. Hello everyone, great to have your company. While Australian politics is consumed with the Australia Day debate, there is still a lot happening elsewhere in the world, particularly in the United States. It was the one year anniversary of President Donald Trump's inauguration, and he has celebrated by talking up his achievements of improved economic conditions in the nation and the destruction of ISIS overseas. He has also sought to remind the people of America of the dishonesty of the mainstream media during his presidency by having the first ever fake news awards. It was also the anniversary of the Women's March on Washington and the feminists of America again were raging about their pet grievances which were somehow all Trump's fault. The US government also had a brief shutdown related to disagreements between the Trump administration, Republicans and Democrats over the future of illegal aliens in the United States and funding of the border wall. Joining me again to discuss what is happening just across the border from him is Deputy Editor of the Unshackled and host of Front and Centre, Emilia Garcia, who is still on holiday in Mexico. Emilio, welcome back to the show. Tim, thanks for having me back. Uh, how is Mexico uh, at the moment? Ah, wonderful, sunny. Uh, the city's awesome. There's like a million new places opening up this weekend, so I could not complain even a little bit. Uh, uh, it sounds like you're, you're having the, the time of your life over there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, the city is really, really, really cool, and the people are super friendly. There's so much to do, and also it's about an eighth of the price of Sydney. So there's a lot to like here. Uh, though we don't get you on the, on this show to talk about Mexico, we get you to uh, discuss what's happening uh, north of the border. And there's uh, a lot happening in the United States. Uh, President, <laughs> President Donald Trump uh, celebrated uh, one year since his inauguration, and he was keen to uh, talk up his uh, achievements, such as the improved economy and uh, defeating ISIS. And uh, one of the things that, or well, I guess he not celebrated, but chose to commemorate was the, uh, the behavior of the, the mainstream media reporting on his administration. He held the inaugural uh, fake news awards, uh, which uh, we at The Unshackled, we think that he copied uh, our uh, fake news outlet of the year <laughs> award, which uh, uh, we're going to be posting uh, la later today. So he awarded uh, right. Uh, 10 uh, fa uh, fake news story awards, uh, four went to CNN, uh, two went to the New York Times, and then there was uh, uh, what you'd call a, a group award, the 11th one, which was the uh, uh, fake uh, Russia-Trump collusion conspiracy, which oh, despite right. all the hysteria and the uh, special prosecutor, there's still not uh, one shred of proof. The, the, actu the, the actual 10 news stories that he highlighted, there was... Uh, uh, commentators who said the economy was going to collapse under Trump and then, you know, that he or did all these embarrassing things uh, overseas such as, uh, you know, th uh, dumping the, the fish food in the, yeah. in the pond in uh, Japan and that he t uh, took down a bust of Martin Luther King and the, and the White House. Oh. And yeah. it, w it was basically, you know, I think a, you know, good reminder about the mainstream media's failings uh, over the past year, especially with these, you know, stupid, like, what, what would you describe them as gotcha moments? So it's like, ha, ah, Trump did something stupid, you know, look what an idiot he is. <laughs> Right. Uh, I mean, listen, I'm never ever going to be one to defend the stupidity of the mainstream media. media. Uh, I think we've discussed it before, though. I thought, I mean, what Trump did, the fake news awards were really funny, but I don't think that they were presidential. I mean, the fact of the matter is that I just thought that, I mean, it was it was pretty funny and, you know, the press kind of lost their mind with it. And, you know, they, 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 there were all these conclusions that were reached by, you know, all the mainstream media commentators that were pretty absurd and kind of petty. But uh, in my opinion, I, I mean, I, I, I laughed at them, but I wasn't very happy that the president of the United States was kind of acting like a 14-year-old girl. It wasn't really in my, in my wheelhouse. Well, I always say, though, that... Uh... You know, the, the re this is the reason why he was elected president, because he's a, you know, unconventional president. And just because, you know, all the, uh, you know, 
presidents before him, you know, di didn't do this. I mean, the American people, you know, wanted, you know, somebody different who would, you know, call out, you know, organizations like the, the mainstream media for their, you know, misreporting. And, you know, the, 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 media does have, you know, a certain responsibility to, you know, make sure that they are, uh, you know, reporting, you know, facts that because they, they, they've had this, you know, since Trump inaugurated, you know, they want to portray it, portray his administration in a never ending, you know, state of chaos. And it's just, you know, and, you know, they fall for, you know, these, you know, fake, stories and also, you know, uh, wanting to, you know, exaggerate and mislead their leaders. Yeah. Uh, uh, sorry, mislead their, um, viewers and it, it, <laughs> they, they need to be called out on it. And, you know, as, and I think it's fair enough for, you know, the target of all this, uh, fake news to, you know, fight back against it. I mean, yeah, I, I think that there are tremendous failings on behalf of the mainstream media. Uh, I mean, you know, Anderson Cooper went from being an incredibly respectable journalist to being essentially a 13-year-old girl talking shit about her ex, which is kind of pathetic. But again, I'm not going to justify Trump's behavior by uh, the complete failing of the mainstream media. I, Again, I will never defend them. I think that they have failed us completely. I think that they've turned into weapons of the left and of the Democrats to beat Trump with and to treat conser and to beat conservatives with. But uh, I, I was not happy with how Donald Trump conducted himself. Uh, and this has not just been relevant to the fake news awards. In general, I think that he could do a lot more to um, display a sense of control and calm and presidential uh, appeal that would actually be better for his governing and would also be better for his uh, approval ratings, which are historically low. The, I think, you know, the, uh, I agree with, you know, him d doing these awards. This is uh, a point you and me d uh, differ because it needs mm. to, it needs to be you know, highlighted that, you know, to the, the public, you know, that, you know, what you're seeing on the news is, is not the truth. And he hasn't just, you know, like been, you know, on Twitter saying, you know, fake news, fake news. He's actually also supplemented it with a list of his achievements saying look what you know i've achieved in my first year of office you know how come the the media right. is you know not, not reporting that so yes it, 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 it is quite you know sensational the you know the headline the the fake news award but you know the the reasoning behind it is to say uh, to the public you know you know don't believe what you're seeing uh you know right. on the nightly news look at you know just reflect on you know what's the 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 factual reality Absolutely. And uh, yesterday I interviewed Andrew Claven from the Daily Wire, and we touched on this point a little bit. Essentially, the mainstream media have not been doing their job just because they have such a deep-rooted hate of Donald Trump. And so I asked him what he would think the coverage would look like of a President Hillary Clinton had she had the same success with ISIS that Donald Trump had. And we basically reached the conclusion that, you know, there would be parades honoring her, there would be you know, all the coverage of the most fantastic president to have ever lived, and she would have probably already won a Nobel Peace Prize. Uh, yet it seems that, you know, Donald Trump in a few months turned ISIS from a land-owning militia, from an actual uh, almost almost a, a sovereign country, into a blog. And it seems to not even be very important. I mean, somehow we forgot in the United States that the most powerful existential generational threat to our uh, safety was destroyed. How did that happen? Well, it happened because of bias. And so, but I'll, but I'll say it once again, the failings of the mainstream media do not make it okay for Donald Trump to conduct himself this way. And I, th I think it's ridiculous of the, the media to say in response that, oh, our free speech is being threatened by Trump attacking <laughs> us. No, I... Uh, being, you know, a part of a free media is, you know, being criticised yourself. That's a part of free speech as well. And, you know, Donald Trump, you know, he's still uh, a US citizen. If he's, you know, being criticised by, you know, all these media outlets, he's entitled to, you know, defend himself. I mean, he hasn't attempted to, you know, shut down, you know, uh, CNN. Uh, you know, they're, they're still free to, you know, report whatever, you know, ludicrous you know, news that they want. It, it just seems that the mainstream media there upset and triggered that they're not getting the respect they think they deserve. 
I mean, that's that's without a doubt what's happening. I mean, obviously Donald Trump has the right to fight back. And I think that that's one of the things that I think um, we can all kind of stand in awe of Trump, of that he is kind of like not afraid of the criticisms of the of the mainstream media. I mean, he he obviously very much enjoys it when he gets praised, as we saw with his whole uh, uh, Pelosi thing when she was uh, when he started coordinating with Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi. He was just loving the positive media attention, but uh, but he does kind of get down and dirty with them, and I think that that's something admirable. However, I think that there are different ways in which you can do it. You can call them out. You can say, "This was a verifiably false. This is awful. This is terrible." And yet there's this, this, this underlying childishness that he brings to the uh, unshackle, uh, to unshackled to the uh, fake news awards that, uh, that I just didn't find becoming. I didn't think it was Donald Trump at his best. I thought it was Donald Trump at his worst. He didn't even, it wasn't even very, very, uh, it wasn't even a very important happening. It wasn't very impressive. It was just kind of like a, a small little reel that I just thought was uh, pretty silly. The mainstream media, they have basically abused their power before to, you know, bring down the president they didn't like in Richard Nixon. I mean, you know, in the grand scheme of things, what happened, you know, at the Watergate Hotel, you know, wasn't, you know, certainly wasn't the biggest scandal in US political history, but because the media, they hated yeah. Nixon so much, they were able to, you know, drag him down and force him uh, to resign. So, you know, they've... You know, pe people say that, you know, oh, Trump's, you know, abusing his authority, you know, the, uh, the media has, you know, history right back, you know, 40, 50 years ago of doing this. And it is important, if not for Trump, uh, you know, other, you know, the, the new media, the syndrome media to, to call this out. Absolutely. And I mean, the, the media bias is very, very ingrained. And you can see this even as far back as the 70s. You saw when uh, Congress people would switch congressional lines, so a, a Republican would become a Democrat or a Democrat would become a Republican. Whenever a re Republican became a Democrat, the coverage was overwhelmingly positive. When it was the other way around, it was overwhelmingly negative. In recent history, in the last six uh, election cycles, the only Democratic, there was only one Democratic candidate that had more negative press than a, than a Republican one. Every other Democrat has had way more good press than his uh, Republican counterpart. So I'm not trying to belittle how uh, how biased the media is. Absolutely not, because it's it's definitely extremely important to notice, and it's it's okay for people to fight back against it. But there is a certain there's a certain um, power that comes along with not stooping to the level of the people that you're fighting against that I don't think should be belittled. So if Anderson Cooper is being extremely goofy and Rachel Maddow is a joke, then punch back with some objective reality and with some, car, you know, with some real facts, but don't just act as childish as they do. That would be what I would take away from this. Another event that occurred to mark the uh, one-year anniversary of Trump's inauguration uh, was the second uh, Women's March, uh, which is meant to uh, uh, communicate somehow that you know tr uh, Trump's uh, administration has been you know horrible to women, that you know he's a he's a raging misogynist, and the the, the pussy hats were back, uh, uh, which That's is a right. reference to the uh, Trump take tapes uh where where he you know talked about you know grabbing women by the by the pussy and it seemed yeah. to me quite difficult to you know find out what they were protesting about they talked about you know the uh you know the gender wage gap uh of which you know has been you know debunked you know so many times and you know right. I, I don't get how that that's a government responsibility but bizarrely they also tried to incorporate their me too movement which uh, <laughs> Uh, that that stemmed from you know powerful liberal Hollywood men abusing their you know positions, uh, which was enabled by the silence of Hollywood feminists. And so, if you're wanting to hold a you know women's march, which incorporates me too, you should really be you know Trump is the person who is you know least 
relevant to that. You should be, you know, protesting against because it has spread to the uh, political scene, the the Me Too movement, and it's uh, the 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 people who've been forced to resign or had uh, allegations levelled against them. It's affected both Democrats and Republicans equally. Yet all of the all of this protest energy was, you know, directed at Trump. Well, I think we saw a clear example of people marching for the sake of marching with no clear message. Because you are absolutely right that they had absolutely no idea what the hell they were protesting. At some point, you know, they, they, they have all of these uh, different quotes by the people they interviewed at the rally. And uh, there were some women that were like, we want people to know that we're here. It's like, well, did you think that there are people walking around not realizing that there are women like, do you think that there are men that were like, oh, fuck, women <laughs> everywhere. Like, how did I never notice this? Clearly buffoonery. And when it comes to the pussy hats, to the kitty hats, rather, to be a little bit more family friendly, the most ridiculous thing has come of those things because they seem ridiculous on their own. Now it turns out that the, uh, I don't know, more ridiculous feminists, we'll call them eco-feminists, if you will, they decided that the pussy hats themselves are disrespectful to women without vaginas. And not only women without vaginas, which you know, is de- debatable if you can call them women or not, but some people do. But apparently it's, it's disrespectful even though they don't have the shape of a vagina. But it was also disrespectful to have pink pussy hats because since not all women are white, well then not all female genitalia would be bright pink apparently. Uh, so yeah, it just goes to show how unbelievably ridiculous this uh, this protest wasn't you know it's not a bad thing to have people come together and you know show their unity uh, you know women and uh, you know gay people uh, everyone has the right to assemble uh, but I think that you do your group a tremendous disservice when you cartoonify and, and ridicule yourself so strongly like you're actually not bringing more women to feminists you're not empowering women you're actually making them look stupid and, and you're making it seem far easier to discredit them and it was actually highlighted by uh, Mike Huckabee, who's the father of White House Press Secretary uh, Sarah Huckabee Sanders, that uh, Trump's actually appointed more women to you know cabinet positions and senior uh, government posts than any other um, you know president in history. And if you look at Trump's yeah. you know, business uh, record, you know, like he he's you know employed uh, a lot of women to you know positions of you know high uh, responsibility. I mean, you know, yes, he you know. Uh, <laughs> It's clear that, you know, he has a history of, you know, objectifying women, but he, you know, clearly, yeah. you know, believes that, you know, they can, you know, contribute both to, you know, business and, you know, government intellectually. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, definitely Trump uh, is, is, has a mixed record, if, uh, to, to put it lightly. Uh, you know, you, you definitely have him admitting to going into the teen Miss USA pageants into the dressing rooms while they're getting dressed, which is pretty pervy and disgusting. Also, him kind of making reference to um, an 11-year-old girl who was walking away from him and him telling the the reporter, like, you see that girl over there? I'm going to date her <laughs> when she's older, which, uh, you know, even to the most ardent Trump supporter, I think is uh, pretty disgusting. But, yeah, I mean, you can't, you can't argue with facts. And the fact of the matter is that at least now, really, uh, wh- when it comes to how he's handling himself regarding women... Uh, as as president, he has not done a lot of terrible things. And one of the things that uh, the leftists kind of uh, fall in the trap of is not being able to oppose something without calling it misogynist, homophobic, and Islamophobic. So if anything is bad by any domination, it has to meet those three requirements. So oh, I'll give you the example of Ben Shapiro. They don't like Ben Shapiro because he's uh, supposedly anti-trans, right? But they have to pile everything on top as well. So even though he says that he is pro-gay marriage, he's a homophobe. Uh, even though he says he doesn't have problems with, uh, with Muslim people individually, he's uh, Islamophobic. Even though he is Jewish, he's a Nazi. The, the, there's this problem with leftists of kind of having to pile everything that's bad onto one person they don't like. That's clearly backfiring. And of course, the the biggest joke about the women's march is that it was again organised by uh, Linda Sousa, who's on the record as supporting you know Sharia law and has defended Saudi Arabia's record on you know women's rights. I mean, <laughs> uh, I mean, what I've always said is that Linda Sarsour is the Muslim and culture, 
they both don't believe a word they say, but people get really pissed off and they get really rich. So I don't really talk a lot about Linda Sarsour. I think that she's actually just a publicity genius. But uh, to anyone that would actually take her point seriously, I think it's pretty egregious that they would ever stand next to her. And um, you, you spoke before about, you know, uh, Trump, uh, you know, his response to a lot of things can be quite immature. But uh, the, his response to the Women's March, I thought, was actually quite mature. He said that, you know, yes, this year has, you know, been great for women, like women's, you know, unemployment is actually lower than, you know, the uh, general, you know, unemployment rate, you know, sort of saying, you know, mm-hmm. oh, you know, yeah, like you can protest, but hey, look at these, you know, like great things yeah. that have happened to women over the year. Absolutely. I mean, this is one of the things that uh, was pretty ridiculous. And I mean, this was pretty brilliant of Donald Trump because he said something which is great. You know, it was a very empowering message to women. At the same time, he was also being, you know, he was being a little passive aggressive and he knew he was going to get a reaction out of the left. And it's so brilliant because he knew that essentially, I mean, there's one thing that you can bet on is that reporters will be offended by anything, right? So you had people going up to Sarah Huckabee Sanders and essentially trying to paint this tweet in a negative light where he's essentially saying, isn't it wonderful that women are doing great and trying to to turn it into something nefarious? And obviously it looks really stupid. And so I'm not not trying to say right now that that he was being legitimate by any any measure. I think that, uh, you know, he he was just, you know, putting out a nice tweet, you know, kind of giving tribute to to women and the right to assemble. But uh, he also kind of put in, you know, just kind of snuck in a little bit of passive aggressiveness just to, get the leftists on the hook and have them freak out. And uh, there was actually two marches on, on Washington in two days. There was mm. the, the Women's March, which was on the front page of you know every news website, led every news bulletin. But the day before was the uh, March for Life, which uh, you know, is always you know, well attended. And you know, Trump was the first uh, sitting uh, US president to ju- to deliver uh, a live address to it. But of course, you know, the media, you know, they're, um, you know, they want to report on, you know, the the Women's March, it's a sign that, you know, 2018, that the tide's going to, you know, turn against Trump. Yeah, well, there's protests against his, you know, presidency all the time. And as we saw the day before, there's plenty of rallies in, you know, defense of, you know, not just his presidency, but also the the policies that you know he stands for. Like you know, leftists organizing a, a a march to you know rage about you know Trump or whoever else. That's nothing new. Like you know, that, yeah. that, that's how. And they've been you know saying that oh you know for the past year that oh you know this event this is going to be the uh, you know the beginning of the end of Trump. And yet it it, it never happens. <laughs> and you know so this, yeah. this is just another sign that you know the the media that you know they're trying to you know hype up something which it's, you know, it's basically just a bunch of, you know, leftists, you know, doing what they normally do. I mean, you know, did the first Women's March achieve anything? Uh, I mean, what did it achieve? Absolutely nothing. Uh, more ridiculousness, of course. Um, I mean, if you kind of compare the how empowered women were uh, by the Women's March or the, light, or the uh, Right to Life March, uh, kind of putting the central issue to side, Obviously, the women's the the right to life uh, march was obviously far kinder to women. If you see the um, the women's march was full of obscenity. It was uh, grotesque. Uh, there were a lot of references to uh, vaginas for some reason. Which uh, I mean, I get that that's essentially what makes a woman, but I don't know. <laughs> I think it's oversimplifying it to kind of like try to to put all of your identity into your genitals, which was pretty silly. While um, the Right for Life march was, uh, it was, it seemed wholesome. People were displaying unity and they were happy. There were no uh, grotesque uh, signs of hate. And again, what I'm saying is try to take the central issue out of it, whether one was to protest Trump and the other one was to protest abortion. Let's kind of ignore that. Just the display of the crowds was so different that uh, actually there was so much more hate and intolerance in the Women's March than in the than in the right for light march that it's uh it's interesting because I think that most leftists would would uh would kind of say that it's the opposite way around. 
And of course, the the big political news uh, in the past few days has been the uh, US government shutdown, which has it's ended right. now. And this stemmed from a disagreement uh, between the Trump administration and Congress over the future of uh, DACA, which is the Deferred Action right. for uh, Child Arrivals. Uh, Trump right. uh, also wants to uh, tie. Um, agreement on this to funding for the war which he needs to get built i mean this was a right. uh, election promise uh, and then mm -hmm. so the shutdown it occurred uh uh, because the, the Democrats filibustered a, an appropriations uh, bill. Um, and it's it's right. the first uh, government shutdown which has occurred in the majority Congress. I mean, the Republicans have um, the presidency, the House and the Senate. But uh, as it's shown over the, the, the past year, I, the, that hasn't meant that, you know, the Republicans have been able to, you know, get their legislative agenda through. It's been really uh, difficult. I think that the uh, the shutdown came and went so quickly that it was hard to even take notice. I mean, it happened, you know, uh, the government shut down, it's really big news. The markets reacted to it by not changing at all. Essentially, their reaction was a non-reaction. And then three days later, it came back. And, you know, the, the, the Democrats really did look extremely weak here. Uh, what What I would have said, a few days ago is that the Democrats were actually kind of starting to punch back and kind of start fighting kind of how uh, Republicans are used to doing, kind of going for gut punches, which uh, Democrats weren't really used to doing. But the fact that, you know, they said that this was a, a, a point of morality and that they were not going to stop fighting until they got a, a clean DACA bill and that they were not going to build the wall, all these things. And then three days later, they, they crumbled under the pressure and essentially opened up the government again. Uh, I think that they ended up looking extremely foolish. Looking at the negotiations over immigration reform, so uh, the Democrats, mm -hmm. they agreed to end the uh, filibuster in exchange for Republicans allowing a debate over the DREAM Act, which is their preferred uh, immigration right. reform. And I certainly agree that, you know, Trump doesn't need to go as far as, you know, deporting second and third generation, uh, you know, uh, children of uh, illegal aliens. I mean, right. yes, you know, he he wants to be seen as, you know, tough on immigration, but you don't need to go, you know, that far. Certainly, I agree that if they're, you know, criminals, these um, uh, children of aliens, right. then, you know, I, I certainly think it's justified uh, to deport them, like uh, in Australia. Um, if we have an opportunity to deport a foreign criminal, we, we do our best to, um, yeah, make it happen. But, yeah, I, I, th I think that, uh, you know, if... Trump, you know, he should, you know, give the Democrats, mm. you know, the, the the Dream Act, and you know, in exchange, get get the funding for the wall, which you know, the, it's it's difficult to do something, you know, about the the people that are already here because the United States is such a uh, disparate uh, place. But yeah, like the 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 wall is, you know, what you know he his promise was, and if he can, you know, point to to that and say, you know, look at this, you know, great beautiful wall as he puts that, then. I think that shows yeah. it's pretty tough on immigration. Yeah, I mean, listen, uh, uh, I've said a million times that that obviously the U.S. has has every right to be uh, to be sovereign and to protect its borders. Uh, the wall, obviously, is not something I agree with, but essentially, you know, you have most people in the U.S. agreeing that dreamers should stay in the country. Uh, the outliers are obviously the the people on Twitter that basically Google search uh, Latino criminals. And then put it on Twitter and say these are the dreamers that you know uh, that the Democrats are trying to to protect, which there's no evidence of, obviously. And actually, dreamers uh, ha are held to an extremely high standard, and if they have any criminal record, they uh, they are they are no no longer um, under DACA status. So I agree that Trump is being politically intelligent by not just giving him giving them the Dream Act, even though from the first day of his presidency he expressed his. Uh, his intent to legalize the dreamers. Uh, however, it seems that this has just gone um, in in such a different direction. Obviously, uh, there is uh, a lot of dysfunction when it comes to the negotiations. Uh, the Democrats are saying that you know they open the government just to start discussing it, which is extremely weak. And uh, I, I mean, I guess the 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 end is, is soon to be seen, is yet to be seen rather. 
It sounds like from what you're saying that uh, Trump is, uh, as it's known, you know, practicing his negotiation skills, you know, out of the deal, you know, 40 chess, whatever, whatever it's called, and probably dealing with the uh, Democratic Party. It's probably a lot more challenging than uh, what, uh, what he's faced in business, given how we know how, you know, ir- ir- irrational the, the, the Democratic Party is. So sort, sort of got to take these, you know, more, you know, hardline uh, positions okay, on issues issues such as immigration that, you know, we both agree are, are unreasonable and probably the reason why the, the Democrats are, are also, you know, playing, you know, really hardball here is because, you know, they think they're going to win big uh, in the midterm elections later this year. And so they, you know, want to hold up, hold off giving, you know, Trump, you know, any, any, anything on, on immigration for as long as possible. So when it comes to 2020, they can say, "Ha, huh, he didn't do what he promised to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that this is true. And uh, I mean, the, the polling numbers uh, are still in their favor for the midterms. Uh, not really as much as before. I think they used to be 18 points ahead. Now they're like nine points ahead. So that's a significant reduction. But they're still, they're still uh, very much um, a threat to the Republican Party. But essentially, yeah, I mean, I think right now Donald Trump is being a little bit more savvy. At some point, uh, he wasn't being very 40 chess because he his point of view with the dreamers was essentially if you don't pass a law within this amount of days well then we'll just have to see what happens then but i won't deport them which isn't a very hardline you know stance to take that's not very good negotiation skills but right now it seems like uh, you know art of the deal even though it was uh, ghost written uh, it was uh, it seems like he is he's being uh, more politically savvy more politically savvy than we've seen in the past well, uh, Trump is a lot smarter than, you know, what a lot of people, you know, stere- stereotypically think him to be. I mean, you know, f- uh, we discussed Michael Wolf's book on a, you know, previous show, which, you know, says he, you know, has the, you know, mind of a child, which, you know, you, uh, he wouldn't be, you know, worth, you know, billions of dollars if he, if he was like that. And certainly that's one of the things that, you know, people um, believed over the, the Syria strike when he appeared to, you know, reverse his uh, uh position on Syria by ordering those airstrikes. So some people, you know, believe that, you know, that was a 40 chess move to, you know, deflect attention uh, away from, uh, you know, the, the Russia uh, collusion conspiracy, which was, you know, really heating up at that time. And because it made, you know, Russia, Russia mad at him. And, uh, you know, the, uh, the Russians, they came to the conclusion like, oh, well, you know, let this, you know, slide for now. But if you do it again, there's going to be, you know, huge con- uh, con- consequences. And so, and you know, Trump actually didn't, you know, do anything else uh, in Syria uh, after that. So th- there was an, I wrote an article on this saying, oh, did, did he just, you know, do a, you know, secret move there? Oh, right. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I guess, obviously, um, this is a man who, with no politically, with no political experience, might manage to uh, basically take over uh, a political system that, uh, an electoral system that always had such strict rules, basically played outside of those rules completely and got himself elected president. Um, I think, obviously, a large proportion of that is uh, just Hillary Clinton being awful. But, you know, clearly, clearly he's not a stupid person. I think... If any, if any objective person that doesn't like Donald Trump has issues with him, it's more with his character than his intelligence. I don't think that he has a low level of intelligence. I think that sometimes, you know, he just needs to learn that not every fight is a fight that he needs to fight. Calling himself a stable genius, uh, I, I, I didn't even hear many, many of his supporters defend that. I think that most people thought it was silly. So absolutely not. He's not a stupid person. And I think he has done some really political, uh, intelligent political maneuvers. But uh, to say that he is, uh, uh, he may be a genius, but he ain't stable. <laughs> well, it's it's often difficult, uh, and we're seeing this in Australia as well with uh, Malcolm Turnbull, who is mm-hmm. also an ex businessman for business people to make the the transition from uh, business to politics, mm-hmm. and, and it basically stems from the fact that. They're, they're not used to, uh, you know, uh, f- uh, people in business being, you know, so du- duplicitous and, you know, lying all, all the time. Right. Uh, I mean, yeah, definitely. And, you know, there's something to be said, obviously, about honest rhetoric within politics. I mean, one of the things definitely kind of put Trump in a, in a, in a positive place in voters' minds was that he, he wasn't bullshitting anymore. 
you know, it was it was him speaking his mind in the words that he wanted to use, and he wasn't playing politics. And I mean, that's always something that we can be happy about, and that we can say, you know, we need more of that. But you know, again, once you reach that level, and once you are the president of all the people, not just your base, I feel like it's okay to become a little more presidential. I get that a lot of people elected Trump to be this way. But you're still governing a whole country, the most powerful country in the world. Maybe it's time to uh, to act a little bit more grown up. Well, we could probably debate uh, that aspect on you know what is uh, you know presidential uh, for for quite a long time. But uh, we'll probably right. leave it at that for today. Uh, there, there'll probably be a lot more happening in in U.S. Uh, politics in, in the next week. We've managed to do a show oh, dedicated okay. to U.S. politics last uh, three weeks, yeah. so it's certainly providing uh, a lot of news. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm sure there will be no shortage of news. Uh, you know, in three weeks there might be another shutdown, so uh, I'll definitely keep you posted with anything, and I'm happy to come back on the show anytime. Yeah, and enjoy the rest of your time in uh, Mexico. And obviously, we look forward to having you back uh, in Australia soon. Thanks so much. All right, everybody, that's the show for today. Australia Day 2018 is now less than 24 hours away, so please join the Unshackled on Australia Day from the ground in Melbourne. We'll be covering the events in the city and attending the True Blue Cruise Australia Day Beach Party, which is at St Kilda Foreshore at 2pm. We hope that the overwhelming majority of Australians who support Australia Day can drown out the Invasion Day crowd. Other upcoming events are Protect Victoria's rally calling on the state government to take stronger action on the state's African youth gang crime wave. It is on Sunday the 11th of February on the steps of Victoria's Parliament. So if you're concerned about the issue, then make your way to Melbourne to show your support. Also, the Unshackled will be present at the Free Speech Rally hosted by the newly formed Australian Freedom of Speech Movement, which will be held in Melbourne at the State Library of Victoria on 24th of February at 1pm. It aims to take a stand against the stifling of free speech in Australia, both in our laws and through political correctness, so I hope that you can make it. If there isn't enough happening, our friend Dave Palau from Church and State is holding his first major event, the Church and State Summit 2018 on the 24th. 3rd to 24th of February in Brisbane, which will feature many high-profile speakers, including Margaret Court and former Deputy Prime Minister of Australia, John Anderson. I'd also like to remind you all once again to vote in the 2017 Unshackler Awards. There are 10 awards with 10 nominees in each category, with the winners determined by a poll of our followers, and it will be announced uh, by our senior editor, Damien Ferry, uh, sometime on Australia Day. The final two categories have just been posted. They are Media Personality of the Year and Fake News of the Year, so make sure you have your say before voting closes. Thanks once again for your company, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in to The Unshackled Waves. Please visit theunshackledwaves.net for all the ways to subscribe and follow the show. Don't forget to pick up your free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and keep checking out theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.